Hi, this is your host Subhil Bharatiya and welcome to Tia for this talk. And today we have with us Johnny Clippert, CEO and co-founder of Stackhawk. Johnny, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. We have hosted Stackhawk uh, before, uh, Scott Gerlach, your co-founder. So our audience, they are aware of what you folks do. But since you are here, so I would love to hear from you. How would you define Stackhawk and your role in the modern IT word. Absolutely. So Stackhawk is really a suite of proactive API security capabilities. So from discovery of your APIs and attack surface through very thorough testing of your APIs, which the testing component is very much geared towards software engineers and automation. So making it really easy to thoroughly test our APIs for vulnerabilities before we deploy them to production. And then the third piece of the platform with observability and oversight is really about helping cybersecurity professionals as they pass off more responsibilities to automation, to engineers, make sure that they understand and have the oversight about how their program is performing. When it comes to API, what kind of security threats you are seeing which are emerging and how they are different from traditional app or environment security. Also, API pose a different kind of uh, risk as well. Talk a bit about the security landscape in the context of APIs. Sure, yeah, I think that's a really great question. So APIs are like 70% of the internet traffic that happens, happens at the API layer. And this is something that I think historically, like when you think of legacy uh, application security capabilities, maybe legacy DAST, they don't really think about APIs as being the primary attack surface. They think about sort of, you know, the front end, like www.dot or app dot being your attack surface. But in the way that we build software today, we have a single page application, a, f a front end layer that's just calling APIs. And so they are replicating like rabbits, <laughs> like bunnies. Like there's so many APIs out there. And I'll address uh, AI coming up here also. So our developers also with AI are shipping code 200% faster than they were without it. And we're just getting started. So um, a AI, is increasing the rate at which we are deploying more and more APIs to our applications. So that just increases the need of our ability to secure them and secure them before we deploy them to production, because there's no way you could possibly keep up with testing all of these APIs if you wait until after they're in production, just based on the sheer volume of code that we're putting out these days. What is the state of API security today? API security is sort of interesting. If you look at the different vendors that, um, if, if you looked at like a, a magic quadrant maybe, or a giga ohm report or something, what you're going to see under API security is a lot of companies that provide sort of production monitoring of APIs. So the way that that technology works is it sits on the gateway and it watches API traffic coming into your system. And what's great about it is it looks for anomalous behavior of those APIs and the, and, the, and, the, and the use of those APIs that says something like, you're under attack right now, right? Like that's a very important part of an application or, or of a security program or an API security program is to know whether or not you're under attack. But Stackhawk's view of this is, that's a very reactive approach. It's a capability that you should have as part of a complete sort of cybersecurity suite. However, there are very few companies that are really addressing the testing, the discoverability right, of these APIs before they're in production, before they're getting traffic through the gateway, is knowing what is my landscape of applications and APIs that I need to test which starts with the code base. So we could talk a little bit about zombies and, <laughs> and other APIs where we always just joke, it's in the code. Like your APIs live in your code base. So let's start there and show you what is possible to be attacked. 
then let's ensure that you're testing all of those APIs and applications, like we talked about, as they're being developed at the rate of development before they enter production. So that's where I sort of delineate Stackhawk is very much more on the proactive side of API security versus the reactive, we're in production, we're under attack right now, block it or send an alert into a SIM. Again, important pieces of your overall security program, but we like to tackle uh, the pieces of API security that ensure that we're actually delivering secure software into production. Thank you so much. And now when you, uh try to is not like after the fact something happened but to protect before something goes wrong uh, you know one of our guests you know he's we done the show together uh, Stephen Riffel from Akamai and he says you know you can't protect what you don't know you don't see so knowing is also important and you folks are uh, also launching oversight that kind of provides even much you know kind of bird's eye view of API security so talk a bit about what is oversight and how does it provide that bird's eye view so that teams are proactive, they are not struggling with uh, something after it went wrong? Yes, so that is what we're, re we're launching. So we're really excited about our oversight capability. There are three pieces to this. One is, like you just said, I can't protect what I don't know about. So the, the platform starts with, what is my attack surface? How many repositories are in my code base that contain an API or an application that should be under test with something like Stackhawk? What we're finding is on average, it's about 30% of your repositories that contain a testable running API or application. The rest could be Terraform files or you know other important things about building your technology. Um, but 30% is not a small number when you when we process these repositories and we're seeing thousands of repositories that companies have. So thing one is where where what are all of my repositories that have attack surface in them? What is it? How often are those assets being deployed to production? Like so what's the rate of change on those different APIs and applications? And who owns them? So that's a really important piece for thing one with discovery is if you're using a product that sits on the gateway to do discovery, it doesn't show you where in the application that API route lives and what development team owns it. And so to me, that's just another way to make tickets and admire your problems. What we have to be able to do is attach the the, the API that exists to the, the team that owns it so that when we do find vulnerabilities or even see in production that this, this certain path or route is getting a lot of activity on it or maybe is being attacked, we want to make sure that we can connect that to the team that works on API. So that's thing one. Thing two is very, very thorough testing of APIs. And so this is the kind of bread and butter of Stackhawk, but it's making sure that as we pass more responsibility for testing into the pipeline as automation, right? So not no longer as a security person sitting manually running, you know, a, a DAST product and making tickets. This is all getting automated in pipeline. And then we're, pat, we're giving developers more responsibility for taking uh, a pass at risk assessment and fixing those issues, we want to understand, okay, here, so thing one, how, how much is under test? Thing two, of the things I'm testing, what am I finding? And are we fixing the vulnerabilities that we found at the rate at which the security team thinks that they need to be fixed and create that agreement with the engineering team? Thing three is how is my overall uh, this is the, the piece of oversight, which is how is my overall uh, program performing? So do I have enough of my assets under test? Thing one. Thing two, are they being tested often enough or thoroughly enough? And that's where you start to see what has fallen out of test. What uh, applications or APIs haven't been tested in the last 30 days? Um, you may have certain APIs or applications that are under a, a very quick rate of development and you want them tested 
you know, on every PR or at least every week, right? So this gives the insight into how the testing is actually happening on everything that we have discovered and ensuring that you are keeping up with your program. So when you ask a CISO, you know, what, what keeps you up at night? Often what they say is not how many highs, mediums, and lows I have. Like that's an important thing, <laughs> but it's, do I know where everything is? And am I testing it regularly and thoroughly as appropriate for my organization? It's putting together the program and then ensuring that the program is followed. And that's what that last piece of oversight is providing for that persona that wants to automate a lot more of the testing, but that is ultimately responsible for the health and execution of the program. So that's what we're, we're giving them with oversight. Can you also talk a bit about uh, how does oversight fit into the overall offerings from a stack? How, how well it integrates and also uh, sometimes uh, when we look at API security, uh, depending on where we are running it, you know, public cloud, private cloud, you know, your own data center. So first of all, talk, talk a bit about, you know, what kind of workloads environment, oversight or stack of targets, and does oversight complement your existing offering like an add-on, or it's an additional you know, offering that folks can also get along with other offering from Stackhawk. Oversight today is included with our enterprise plan, as is API discovery. So we think that these two things are table stakes. Um, like you said, you have to know what to test in order to actually run a great program. And something that we have observed over time and, and really hats off to my co-founder, Scott, who has sat in the seat, who has been a CISO, who has board level responsibility and reporting responsibility on the health of your cybersecurity program, your, your application security program. I, we've observed that a lot of folks struggle with knowing what to report up. They struggle with knowing how to get more resources. And so as part of that, we feel like this is just, again, table stakes of running a really healthy program. So again, today that is all included in our enterprise uh, product to ensure that you know what to test, you're testing it thoroughly, and then you can report up uh, to you know, your CISO or to the board about the program that you're running and its health. We are almost at the end of the year. Uh, just, just, I mean, of course, when you folks are ready with new announcement, we'll talk about that. So we cannot talk too much, but just tease us, give us a teaser, what else to expect from Stackhawk, um, I mean, the remaining two months or early next year? I think um, as a teaser, there's a lot of really interesting opportunity to continue to integrate with some of these more CNAP or production monitoring type providers for APIs and continue that code to cloud story. There are a lot of different, um, very successful, very large companies that have largely focused on SecOps and sort of the, the prod monitoring, prod management side of the house that are starting to grasp how important it is to be able to connect the dots from where the code lives, where your attack surface is, how it's being tested all the way through to what happens to that endpoint or that application in production. So I'm, you are starting to hear a lot more players in the market talk about this code to cloud story. And I think it's a little bit of a race to see who's going to really execute well on that. Um, it also bridges two personas, right? You're a SecOps persona, an AppSec persona, or three, and a developer are completing the chain, but they're going to have to become much more aware of each other's jobs, capabilities, and um, how they interact with digital assets in a company in order to actually protect them well. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think there's gonna be some changes in the market coming up here, a lot of opportunity for partnership, for integration, uh, and we look forward to, to doing that. Julie, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about Stackhawk, this new offering, Oversight. Great insights on API security and the whole landscape. It, I really thoroughly enjoyed the show and I look forward to talking to you folks again. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you digging in and giving us an opportunity to talk a little bit about Stackhawk and our new Oversight capability.